So Eric, let's just get going. Sounds good. Let's Sounds good. Everybody. Thank you again for joining us. This is through Breakthrough Broker and Lab Code Agents. I'm Tristan. Eric, I'll go to you, my friend. I'm Eric Sachs, co-founder over at Breakthrough Broker. I want to thank Lab Code Agents and uh, all the ladies on the call today. This is going to be really exciting. I think we'll have some great information. And uh, again, I can't thank you guys enough and, and a busy time for you guys to spend the time with our uh, users. And so thank you. And uh, why don't we have everybody introduce yourselves really quickly. We have a, for, for all our viewers, we have a super geographically diverse crew here today. So I love that. And so Tammy, why don't we start with you? Um, my name is Tammy Pardee. I'm the owner of Halton Pardee and Partners, and we're in Los Angeles, California. So fantastic. Thank West you. Side. Yeah. Awesome. Karina. Hi. Yep. I'm Karina Loken. I um, am part of the Loken Group in Houston, Texas. We have 85 members on our team, and I also um, am the operating principal for our Keller Williams Market Center. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you, Marty. Marty Hampton from Raleigh Durham Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Um, I owned a Remax, two Remax brokerages until about three months ago, and then I switched to EXP. I've got a team of about 15 people. We did about 475 deals with the team and uh, a lot more with the brokerages last year. Awesome. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And Lauren. My name is Lauren Muss. I've been a real estate agent for 26 years in New York City, born and bred there, specializing in every area in New York City. I have a team of about 10 people and really specialize in anything from 1 million to 50 million. It's awesome. a wide range. I love that. That is a wide range. I do have a bread and butter area, but I do have <laughs> Awesome. I love that. Well, let's get started, man. Let's yeah, you go. go start it right off. ahead and ask the questions. Let's do it. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to go with Tammy first, only because she's on my right-hand side here first. So Tammy, you're, you're up first here with this question. Uh, many agents had customers they were actively working with when this all started and who are now on the sidelines. How, how are you dealing with their uncertainty in regards to when they're telling you, hey, Tammy, you know what? We're going to wait off a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we're going to just wait this out maybe three months, four months, five months. Are you saying, yeah, that's okay. Or are you giving them a different message? I think it's up to the, really the, whoever it is, if they don't want to move, they don't want to move. But what I'm doing is I'm giving the information of the last, I'm really going into the numbers and the data. So I, I did a whole analysis on the last recessions that we've had, the last four real estate recessions. And then I'm also looking on an international basis of what happened in Italy, what happened in King County. So I'm giving them information because it's really, a, to me, more of a check mark. So now is actually the time to buy if you're trying to buy. So I'm just really giving them all the data. And once they see the data, the truth is in the numbers. So that's what I've been doing. That's good. I love that answer because it's, it's data driven and you're just seeing where they're at. Lauren, how about you? I mean, New York City is a little different. We're completely shut down. We can't really sneak in. We're not allowed in buildings. So you have to validate their feelings. They're all a little scared. And I kind of say like now, if you're ready, is a great time to buy. I think the deals are going to be good right now, but there's still a distance between where the seller is and where the buyer is. So I think most people are holding out. And I do think that, you know, once there's some green light and open skies that, and we can start showing again, you know, they'll be ready and, you know, slowly tiptoe, the prices will come back up. I love that. And Marty, how about you? You're in a, you're in a different area than North, North Carolina was, uh, we were deemed an essential um, yeah. business. So we were able to show, but of course nobody wanted to show and you can't really be cavalier about it. And, uh, and I do believe that you have to validate their concerns that they're, they're they're real. Their concerns are real. Which is so, a good example, actually, of, of people being in an essential area and being able to go out, but still scared, which kind of sets absolutely. the tone, right? Absolutely. So one of the things that we did, of course, we went through all the numbers, and, and I still think it's a great time to buy, especially in certain price ranges. But here's what we did. We did two videos, one for the seller, one for the buyer, about the safety procedures that we're going through. And that includes the gloves, that includes the masks, that includes the footies. That includes the process that we go through when we show a home physically, um, but it also went into that you can do a lot virtually as well. I like that. So with those videos, you're just educating the buyer and seller in your sphere uh, as to 
the fact that they can do it safely. And so you're just cutting that conversation off before it even happens. Right. I like that. Marty, where are you posting those videos or how are you delivering them to your audience? Well, of course, Facebook and things like that, but we have um, a database full of about 50,000 people now that we communicate with that are either past clients or former clients or going to be clients, we hope. And the, I think there's some real estate agents in there too. <laughs> of course, of course. How about you, Karina? Well, so our story here has just been a whole lot different than, than most. We also have been an essential service from the the beginning and um, there's even some memes flying around that you know so many of the cities really went into true shutdown and it's been kind of remarkable to me I mean we definitely had you know folks here that were concerned on the front end and there was a lot of day-by-day -day changes of just the un the unknown what to expect what was going to happen um, but all all things told Houston has really still been in action. Um, in fact, our our lead gen for April and the, the leads that we've had coming in, we actually set an all time record for number of agreements signed. Um, so I mean, it's just it's been a really interesting time. It was definitely really funny on the front end for a couple of weeks till everybody, you know, kind of got past that initial like denial anxiety, what do we do? Um, and the news changing day by day. But then fast forward, um, the, the second half of it for us, it's been about six weeks has just, we're like business is going gangbusters back. You know, we're starting to see really that traction come back around. So, um, you know, it's certainly the numbers that we have right now overall in Houston are not the same. Um, but, you know, anybody like um, Marty was just saying about, you know, have, having that safety plan in place. That was something that we did also very proactively on the front end. Um, we attached like safety information to our listings um, so that people could really see what we had in place when, when they were going to be looking at a home and we made sure everything could be seen virtually. And we've done a number of transactions now also where the whole thing has been virtual. It's been virtual with the seller. The buyer has bought it only seeing, you know, a virtual um, videos and tours. And um, so it's been, it's been really interesting to watch the progression of people's emotions and mentality through the whole thing. You know, one thing, uh, and Tristan, tell me if you think I'm wrong. One thing that's interesting about hearing all of the different geographic markets and the situations that you're in, 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 in Raleigh, Durham and, and, and Houston and New York and LA is that the past recession, and, and Lauren, you said you're educating people about the past recession, correct? Um, and so the past recessions, it was pretty much across the board. Everyone was having problems. And here we're seeing it so different in different, in different pockets of the country that it really shows that this isn't an economic caused recession. It was a pandemic caused recession. And so the bounce back is gonna be different. So and I think a lot of people are having like, um, PTSD from the last recession, right? Especially in LA, right? And so I think if you can articulate to the user, to the, to the viewers on the call, if you can articulate these stories that some markets are having trouble getting back, some markets really didn't see much of a blip, that, that you can articulate that to your buyers and sellers right now that, that it's a different type of event than we saw in 07, 08, 09. I mean, like we had just interrupt for one second. We, we, had, no, we definitely. Oh, I'm, oh, go ahead, Lauren. You know, we had nine eleven. We had two thousand eight. We had Sandy. We had so many things, and people swore after nine eleven that they would never live above a twentieth floor. And shortly, you know, all of a sudden, all these skyscrapers went up, and people were buying on fiftieth and sixtieth and seventieth floors. People forget, but this is the first time that you know this is medical. This is not a terrorist. Where the you know we don't know the end. The uncertainty is, I think, what is scaring so many people right we'll now. Agree. And you know we don't know. You know, there was always an end. Right, mm -hmm. Karina, you had a, a something right. to say. Well, no, yeah, I, and I just wanted to make sure that, that I was really clear. I mean, we definitely have seen a drop in certain Texas markets. We've been looking at data anywhere between 35 to not quite 45 percent of a drop in the, the written and pending business, right? So yeah. um, we definitely, it's on the front end of that lead funnel where mm -hmm. we're just really needing to double down to make sure that we still have the same business that we intended to have in the first place. So it's taking, you know, more effort on the front end, but I, for, 
for us, you know, the blessing has been, and for some, the Carolinas, some other areas, just staying essential, you know, certainly has made it a very different story. So Karina, that was a perfect segue. You said you're digging in and, and you're working yeah. on that lead gen right now. So I want to ask, um, I, I'll start with Marty, actually. Um, what have you done to adapt your business right now for lead generation for closings in July, August, September? Well, the first thing we did is, is not change my inside team. I have a big support team that supports my sales people and we didn't change anything. So, so that helped. Uh, we stayed steady. And then, um, I've got some agents that um, I have a, a large, large office, so we can say sh stay socially distanced from each other within this office, believe it or not. So I actually had some agents that felt comfortable coming in. Some agents prefer to work at home. And just the message really is, is that you're going to have to be more caring. <laughs> it can't be a, a one and done. You know, I was just thinking about what you said. It's not like a 9-11. It's not one event and over. You know, this is an ongoing thing. And who knows how long we'll have to deal with the, how the public really is going to react to this. But the fear out there is something that I think is different from what we've experienced in the past. The ongoing fear that something could happen to your family. You know, mm -hmm. that's just a big deal. So the only thing you can do is just be more aggressive with your calls. you got to call your the people that you're doing business with now, the people that were ready to do business and, and just put them on the back burner, but just tell them you're still here when the time is right for them. You hopefully you'll still be here. So it's just more calls, more contacts, more, just mm -hmm. digging, digging a little deeper. Dig I, I deeper. Like that. Dig deep. well, Lauren, what are you doing being shut down as much as you're shut down to, to keep momentum so that when you, when you guys do open up, you have some forward momentum. I mean, I can't even get my housekeeper of 13 years into my apartment. You know, the difference in New York City is most people have fled. You know, most people have gone to right. Connecticut, the Hamptons, you know, Westchester, wherever they can go. So we're 100% shut down. Our offices are closed. Everything is closed. So we've really been doing everything virtually. You know, so A, we're trying to stay positive. B, we're doing our weekly virtual team calls and going over all the properties. We've had some closings that are virtual, but everything is virtual. We're doing, you know, if we could sneak in, if there was no doorman or a townhouse and we could sneak in, we did a video. And we made sure that we started from the beginning to the end so that you walk through. And like people want to know how big are the closets. They want to know, you know, how many drawers the bathroom has. So it's a very different type of video that we're doing now. And we're doing virtual open houses. We're doing everything virtual so that we're trying to collect calls from people. I think we made sure that our web page is perfect, that every property listed has the photos, has a different description. We revamped really everything to be current and knowing that people are home now looking online. So we felt that was really important. I did a, um, a new, like I have my Instagram, I did a team page, so I never had that before. So now I have an Instagram team page that focuses on real estate trends, maybe the best bathrooms, maybe some designers, you know, and, and then I have my personal one so that people can look at both. Um, what else are we doing? I mean, there's, you know, I, it's funny. So I have time now. So I always kept in my, um, my schedule, you know, like I closed on something five years ago and I saw that I had closed on this property five years ago. So I decided to send her an email saying, by the way, yesterday was our anniversary. Can you believe five years went by? Have you been? How's everything? And she's like, funny you called, you know, I'm just realizing I'm spending more time in Westchester and I don't need my four bedroom and maybe we can talk about selling. So it was just, I think that you need to make the phone calls and make the effort yeah. and stay in touch with people. It's crazy, Tristan. It's overriding. We hear it all the time, huh? Just pick up the phone. Keep making yeah, the phone calls. What does it I, come down to? Uh, Lauren, I have a quick question for you, only because they were asking, uh, what's your Instagram handle since you mentioned Instagram? So okay, so Lauren Must Team is my new one, right, and perfect. then Lauren with an underscore Must is my regular one. So it's still a mix. We're in we're in this beginning working stages, but those are the two. And we'll get everybody's as well up there. I just put awesome. it up. I wanted to point one thing out to all the viewers. You said something that I thought was really important and I hadn't thought of it this whole time was to go through your website and all of your profiles to make sure it's easy to find you, that that stuff's working right, that your forms are working right, that your website and email, all that stuff. Um, you had said you made sure that all your forms were perfect. And so uh, I hadn't thought to bring that up 
to anyone. So I think that's a great, since you're doing everything virtually, that's a really great reason and time for us to make sure that everything is really dialed in. Um, Tammy. Yes. Um, we're, I'm doing a weekly video to everyone called Talking with Tammy, where I tell, because everything's pivoting so fast and I want everyone to be up to date. So I do that for all my clients. Um, and we do it at home with my partner. He, it's like a Q and A, so it's kind of fun. And then, you know, I, I've been calling everyone, my clients and, and literally everyone, but like, I think it's important to not push the real estate right now and be like, what are you doing? You want to sell? You want to do this? I think it's really important to like, just connect. So it's more about, Hey, I was thinking about you. You know, if you have any questions, is there, if there's anything you want to ask, and it's amazing how many people actually are really concerned about the value. So then we created all these graphs of the last recessions area by area. So like Venice, Mar Vista, Beverly, you know, every single area specifically. So we could send that out to those clients and say, hey, here's where it was last time. Here's where we are now. Here's a 15 year graph. Overall, you're going to be fine. And then I did all the analysis over 20 years on how much markets have grown to show people that it's going to be okay. Cause people want to know it's going to be okay. You know, we've had about a seven to 12% drop here, I would say, mm -hmm. um, but it's more accurate pricing. I don't know if Tristan can re relate yep. to it in California, but we got into like really inflated numbers where people were pricing on, you know, 11, 15% gains in the next year. And they wanted to take that then. Right. So I've been really like, you know, really just talk. And I also say to people, Another thing is a lot of people call me and say, where, what should I price it at? Where am I going? And I say, price it. You can price it low. This is a free time for people right now. See what the market will get, will bear, and then you can make the decision. So. Tammy, I have a question from the audience for you. Uh, yeah. Well, first of all, what's your Instagram handle? Uh, Tammy Halton Pardee. All right, perfect. And I think I've got your right spelling, so I'll put it on there. But here's a question. When you first, when I first asked you the question, about uh, what you're doing with your customers. They, they want to know, Janine says, what is the data you use to encourage people to either buy or sell or just to give them the news of what's going on? Do you gather it from anywhere besides the MLS? I gather a lot of it. For, I have a guy at my, I have a man at my office that that's all he does is basically data and coding for us here because we do a lot digitally. So he is, he's gathered it really from the MLS because you can go back 15 years in the MLS here. And so then we get the, you can go on the MLS and get the graphs. And then we put actually, we inputted like what happened and when. So we like the crash and, you know, the crash, 9-11, all of the things that happened to show why the market went up and down. So, but the MLS. That's awesome. Happened. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. I just put up the Instagram link for Tammy now, and then we'll get everybody's as well. So Karina, you you're, you're one more person for this, for this particular question. Sure. Um, honestly, this is one of my favorites. Um, um, anything lead gen, that's really the name of the game in this business. Um, and, you know, the, the big thing for us was the, the nature of our calls really changed. So the conversations that we were calling to have when we first um, started making phone calls, um, we, our first priority was what we call our forever clients. Most of us call them our past clients. Mm -hmm. um, we've renamed that because we want to think about working with them for forever and we hope that they want us to be their forever agents too. So it's really been a mindset thing for us and for our organization. Um, but those forever clients for us is anybody that's either working with us right now or that we've um, done a transaction with in the past. So our, in our data bank, we have another word for us, data bank, because there's just a lot of gold inside there. Um, we have about 62,000 total in our data bank. Um, eight, about 8,000 of those are what we would call our Mets. So a combination of these forever clients that I was talking about or Sphere, um, you know, friends and family, just whoever's in there, agent referrals. So in, in that 8,000, we called our forever clients first. That was about 4,000 of local forever clients. And our our call and our message to them was 100% contribution. We're calling to check in on you. Um, we do have a 501c3 that we had formed actually, um, ironically, about a year before Harvey hit and was such a blessing. 100% of every dollar that comes through goes right back out into our local community. Um, and each year we normally do a home like remodel for a needy family. 
And so we've been, you know, banking those funds um, throughout the year from different things that we do when we're teaching or whatnot and donations. So instead of doing a, a full on remodel project this year, we've decided very quickly to pivot that and use those funds to help as many families as we could with immediate needs. Um, and so that was kind of the middle of our phone call was, hey, do you need help? Or is there anybody that you know that needs immediate help? Um, and then just on the tail end of that, you know, of course we're in real estate and we're here to serve you, but right now we're really just here to be here for our community. So anything that you need, please let us know. And out of that, we honestly got so many referrals, right? Like we weren't in any way, shape or form asking for referral business or for even real estate business at that point. We really were just calling to check on our data bank and let them know how much that we care about them and care about our relationship with them. And um, it really helped us to, to build and strengthen relationships with the people that we currently have in our data bank. It was, it's been really amazing. We've gotten some really neat feedback and some Facebook posts. And one gentleman even um, put a, a post online to us that um, we had helped him or called to help during Harvey, you know, and he said, the client appreciation events are great and they were great helping me, you know, buy, sell doing real estate, but he said the fact that when the transaction's over, that I know that I have somebody on my side that actually cares about my family and I, and they called during Harvey and we didn't need help, but they just called again during all of this COVID stuff and I lost my job and we did need help. And then went on to describe, you know, what we had done to help his family and how much that meant. And so <clears throat> for us, um, that's just been a big part of our lead gen through all of this has just really been solidifying those relationships because that you know, those relationships you'll never lose, right? And yeah. and then the next call can be about real estate, but we've just really been checking in on each other. Yep. I love that. And our, um, thanks. All right, so. I'm super proud of our peeps, you know? You're, you're, you're so awesome. So some takeaways here really quick and then I'll shift over. Um, talking with Tammy, Tammy, that was like, I wrote a whole bunch. I was like, oh my God. And then it's just a whole bunch of ideas. I wanted to be a talk show host when I was younger. And so I used to video myself as a kid doing it. And I'm like, I'm going to pull it out. <laughs> that is so good. I mean, look, you could even start a thing off on TikTok. If you guys are using TikTok. Can you I, my kids are using it. We're trying to use it. Yeah. <laughs> 15 seconds, 60 seconds talking with Tammy on that. That would be sick. But uh, okay, great, great job on that. Um, Karina, forever clients. I love that. That is I wrote that down for my team. I'm like, I'm going to go tell them. I'll be like, guys, uh, forever clients. Um, so good job on that. And then a question for, for Lauren from John. Lauren, uh, it says, Lauren, are you finding people are renegotiating signed contracts? Are sellers being understanding for people who can't close? Uh, got a few of those. Um, yes and no. I think that right now two things are happening. If you had a signed contract or three things, if you had a signed contract and you're about to close in this COVID area, um, either they're going to close with a little delay and you'll be fine. They're going to ask for an extended closing or they're going to ask to renegotiate. And some people um, are finding a medium where, you know, they say, okay, if we have to put it back on the market now and we got 10, we might get nine. So let's just give them, you know, nine, five and find a happy medium, make everyone happy because we're not sure if we're going to be able to sell this in three months, six months or a year. There's some people that are being really stubborn and we're at a standstill and we can't close because they were supposed to sell their previous place in order to close on the new place. And the other one is, you know, you know, that we're just closing. So it's definitely a point of content right now and it's an issue. And we're hoping that people find a middle ground and we're working on it. It's work in progress. All right, I love that. Guys, there's a few questions for us, Eric. Yes, this is being recorded. Uh, we're gonna put up the link here right now in the chat box for the YouTube page to subscribe. And I think within like three or four hours, Eric's team, they're going to get the recording and then blast it out to uh, all both of our databases, which is like 600,000 agents. So you'll get that, but go ahead and subscribe as well. Uh, let's shift questions. Eric, I'm going to take one here. Before. And this time I'm going to start with Lauren. I'll start with Lauren since uh, you just finished, Lauren. Uh, is there anything that you're doing differently in this market to get listings, specifically listings? Anything that stands out? 
I mean, my business has always been referral. So to sit and try and pitch listings right now is not really happening because you're not, it's not the right time to put on a new property. It's, a, it's fine to keep your property on. We don't have days on market anymore, so that's all good. But to pitch someone right now, you know, I think that I have had some Zoom pitches, which have been wonderful. And, you know, pricing is really hard to decipher right now because we don't know where we're going to be. But everyone who I've been building up right now and doing my Zoom pitches on or, face, or FaceTime pitches, you know, we're getting ready, we're getting prepared, and we're getting an idea of pricing. And kind of what I'm saying is let's just wait till we open because we can't show. So all the existing properties we're keeping on the market, but for the new ones, you know, let's get ready. Let's see when we can get in, get photos, get everything, you know, the virtual, get everything ready. And the minute we can see some sort of light slowly tiptoe on, I think that right now buyers are really looking for deep discounts that the sellers aren't willing to give. So I think the people want to see that we're going to be okay and we're going to be fine once this, you know, opens up. And then I suggest putting on the property maybe a few weeks after freedom. I love that. Thank Tiffany you. says, Lauren, I feel you girl. So you got some props on that. <laughs> I love it. Let's go to uh, Karina asking you the same question. Is there anything that you're doing? Because you're in a different market than than Lauren or even Tammy or, or even Marty. How are you guys approaching the focus on just listings? Anything? Sure. Um, yeah. We've done a couple of things specific to listings. Number one, the very first thing that we did, um, like as a whole organization, but around everything, listings and everything else was ask, okay, so how can we to everything, right? So if there was any kind of a, a hurdle, a hiccup, um, anything that looked like it was gonna get in our way, in the very beginning, we were shutting down or staying somewhat open here county by county. And so one of the counties that we actually have a lot of business in um, did shut down completely. And, and so then the next question was, okay, so if we can't go and video, if we can't go do our photography, if we can't do any in-person showings, how can we just tackle this thing? And um, so some of the things we put into play in that county we did for other listings, we found um, stabilizers through Best Buy um, that that sellers could actually, they're like 80 bucks a piece, sellers could actually take a, a video tour of their home with their phone even, um, but it helped to keep, you know, instead of me doing, you know, with my camera and it bouncing around, um, it's just some technology to help make that video look a little bit more professional and not get motion sick while anybody's watching the tour. <laughs> yeah. um, we also have, um, yeah, we also did a big mastermind session as a team and chose three things to put into play and the one very specific to listings. Um, and I think in California, it's kind of normal practice in a lot of areas to do a pre, um, pre-listing inspection. That's not something that we do here, but we felt like um, as, you know, that was just one more person getting in and out of the home um, once the property was, was active and potentially, you know, under contract that if we could offer a pre-listing inspection ahead of time, that was one more reason why buyers didn't have to go out and look at properties, but it also gave our sellers a lot of confidence to list with us um, in knowing that we were taking some of those proactive steps to not have as many people going through their home either. That's awesome, I love it. Marty, what about you? Anything you're doing specifically for listings or to gather listings in your area? You know, my business is always focused on listings. I mean, I love what Tim, Tim I think it was Tim Hagel that said, the, the only metric that I look for is the number of listings we take per month. And if I really take, take that, uh, last year out of 475 homes, almost 300 of those were listings that we took and we eventually sold. So listings are my most important metric. That's what I focus on. So for example, last month, we would usually have listed 50 homes. We listed 20. That was really down because of the virus scare. And um, so it's just recently started to open back up here. And uh, for example, I think um, some of the instant buyers like Open Door opened up in two markets in the United States. One of them was in Phoenix and the other one was right here, Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill. And uh, so they did a virtual tour. And, and again, I think it was um, somebody said in Texas, it's county by county. And of course, I serve a large county area and you can do some things in one county and you can't do some things in another county. 
So um, one of my competition went on the listing and did a virtual. And of course my agent showed up with a mask, with gloves, with footies, fully prepared to go in and look at the house. And of course we got that listing. So listings have always been just super important to me. So we still focus on the launch. I've done something uh, that's maintained our presence as the top um, seller of resale homes in my market for about five years. And we've done that by creating the most superior launch, I feel like, uh, through comingsoonhomes.com. That's a national website that we have, but it's also a local website that we have. And really, we can extend that a little bit because of maybe the virus, maybe it was two more weeks, when as last year, we might have been extending it because something needed painting, you know, now we're extending it because the family is a little nervous about showing the home. So we really do a super um, presentation on social media and to all of our database and to all the other agents. So when we open the door, we've got more of an auction atmosphere instead of just we're opening the door. We, we make a bang out of it. I love that. Thank you. That That's really good. And going to Tammy then, just to round that question up, Tammy, anything you're doing specifically for, for listings? I know you're heavy on listings as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm heavy on listings. Yeah, we're doing the Matterport 3D tour. Um, that's like a dollhouse tour. And that is really amazing because you just, you can basically go and if you want to get in the shower and look around in someone's house, you can do it from your computer. So that's been wonderful. Um, you know, our website traffic is up 168% on Halton Pardee. So wow. we're really showing the listing, you know, the, our sellers that, you know what, we're, we're open to show here, of course, with precautions, but we're really showing the sellers like it is time, it is the time to get on the market. So we're using the data from our website and, and also from Zillow, we're partnering, you know, we partner with Zillow as well and a lot of things and just showing like people are actually looking, they want, to um to buy a home and i think this whole stay at home order a lot of people are missing the point like how important your home is so that's i'm really pushing that as well like now what do you want what do, what's important to you for a home and and that's been interesting because people will either be moving or they'll be really hun hunkering down so that's true i think the more the more people are are home and in their house they're realizing wait a second i'm not super happy where i'm at Right, I want to move as soon as this is over. Or they're like, "Yeah, I really love my home." So great. I think that's a great point for a call too. Yeah. How are you enjoying your home? Are you you like it now that you have to spend so much right. time in it? That's a great thing to ask. I mean, real, right. real estate's always a safe haven, right? A safe haven. Yeah. So it's always a good place to park your money, and it always will be. And you can live it, touch it, and enjoy it. Right. Right. That's very true. I'm gonna. Uh, so. Tristan, I agree with you. There's some good questions in the Q&A. So I'm going to ask one that's in here and I'm, I'm going to focus this. I'm going to ask Lauren the question because the question is actually directed to Lauren. But any of, uh, any of you that work in new construction, please pipe in. Lauren, um, how has new development or new construction, how's that being impacted? I mean, I think new development is probably the best place that you can do a deal right now for a couple of reasons, because they're used to buying from a floor plan. So people know that they're going to get the newest kitchen, the newest, newest bathroom. When you're selling a resale, you know, you're not sure how old is the kitchen. They say it's seven, does it feel like 10 years? Is the bathroom, you know, the measurements are never true, but in new development, everything's pretty true. So I think that new development is a very safe place to buy right now. The only thing is, is that people are looking for bigger discounts than sellers are willing to give. So it's really up to the broker to control their buyer and to really explain that, you know, the data again of how important, what a, you know, what the price should be, how much you should or shouldn't get. So that's really the discrepancy right now. Mm -hmm. But I think new development will probably be the easiest thing in New York City to sell. I mean, if you look at the stats in New York, we did one deal over $4 million this week two deals last week and maybe four the week before. And as year to date, we're about 75% down with under regular deals. Right. So, you know, we have to be a little more patient here, but I do hear that some of the developments are doing well. Ladies, anyone else working in new development? Anybody else? No, no. Oh, oh Karina? Karina, shoot. We do. Yeah, we do. Um, you know, what we saw immediately, and I think a lot of it was a knee-jerk reaction to kind of the, still some of the residual pain from 2008 through 10 here. We had a lot of builders um, that aren't, aren't with us now or really took a hit because they got caught with so much inventory. 
So the one thing that we saw almost immediately was they just stopped building, um, which, you know, seemed kind of counterintuitive because we like those are COVID free homes, right? Those are the safest houses to buy. So um, that was one thing that we did see almost immediately. Um, and yet the sales counselors have still stayed um, at their offices for the most part. And um, our, our new construction team has been out still making same thing, you know, developing those relationships. Um, and we're already starting to see, you know, some of that come back into play as we've started to go back to work. So, but that was, that was a, the biggest, I think Perfect. the biggest thing that we've seen. Uh, they are our, our sales counselors though. It's been a really great opportunity for us to add value to um, our sales counselors. In fact, the president of one of the largest builders here in Houston called the other day and said, thank you um, for some of the virtual videography that we've been teaching sales counselors that they can do for their own communities. I mean, they're there and they're sitting in their communities, right? And they know their communities at a really high level. Um, and I think it's been a lot of fun for them too, but it's a way to really start being able to help them get traction. Um, and and it's apparently been met with a lot of gratitude. So it's been great. Awesome. Uh, I have a question for Karina really quick in the chat box. Uh, Karina, there was a question. I'm trying to find it. Here it is. What was the item you get at Best Buy for doing the videos? Oh, it's, um, and I don't have the product number information with me, but it's, a, it's something called a stabilizer. Okay. It just helps your, your video from being super wiggly that okay. you can, you know, literally, if you wanted to buy a couple of them and ship them, right, and keep them in bags for 48 hours in between users, I guess, even, um, but you could send them to your sellers and have them do a video tour of their property and then return the equipment back to you. Um, and we've had, we played around with it a little bit. We had a few sellers that did make some, some video tours and they came out remarkably well. Um, you know, it's certainly under normal circumstances, not the first thing we'd ever encourage people to do is take their own photos or make their own videos for their property tours. But under the circumstances, it, you know, it, it answered a real a need for buyers that wanted to see inside the property and not physically go. Yeah, we use Perfect. them. And we created one e-blast that we sent out to the entire brokerage community with videos of every one of our listings. I'm also listing heavy. And we just did a video for every single listing. And if we couldn't do the video, we did pictures and kind of made music and made it move like a video. And we sent it out to all the brokers so they could tour every single right. listing. Just, it's, our job right now is to make everyone's life easy and not have them have to scroll and find things. So. Oh, like Lauren, that. on that really quick, Eric, what you just said, our, our job is to make everyone's life easy. That's exactly what Zillow and Redfin have been doing for years. And if we can apply that to our business, it's exactly what Lauren says. That's how we stay ahead, right? Yep. That's beautifully said. I like that. Uh, that was good, dude. Back to you, Eric. I like that. All right, uh, ladies, I have a, a question. With So in most markets maybe not New York, but most markets, we're going to start to see some of the stay at home orders lifted. We're going to see the ability for realtors to start showing occupied properties, possibly, probably not live open houses for a while, I'm assuming. But what would you say to the viewers today um, are one or two things they can do right now today as we start to get back to um, a new normal? I'm going to ask Tammy first. But well, I mean, we're, we can show right now. So we're kind of, I feel like we're a little bit ahead of getting back to a new normal. Okay. Um, I think that one of the things right now, and I think it's going to be in the future is people want to make sure they are protected. So I did bags and booties and everything for every single one of my agents. So they take them with them. And I think that's important. Um, but really we've, we've already been moving forward. And I think that getting back is the information. People are going to want as much information. Right. I think that what we're asking people to do before they get inside a property is to the virtual, they have to see the 3D tour and everything. Also to drive by and make sure it's where they want to be. Drive by in the morning and at night to make sure it's, it's where they want to be. So I'm being very selective on who we're showing because I don't want it to be like a free for all on the showing. And I actually like it better this way because when they're out there buying now, they're serious. So I just put three properties in escrow this week. I mean, it's like. Perfect. So what about real quick, let me rephrase a little bit of that. Sure. For some of the viewers who were, who momentum slowed down so much during the last eight weeks. Right. And they want to pick up momentum between now and the end of June. Right. Um, 
any action items? Uh, I like the first action item of the safety stuff. Right. What else? Anything else? Yeah. If you if you've been in business, you have to go. The biggest thing again is to call every single person. Got it. To be and also know the market right now. If you are calling and don't know what is going on in the market, then you're not a benefit to anybody. So you've got to know, hey, listen, the market's gone down seven to twelve percent in your particular area. These houses are in the market. Would you like to see and they're more accurately priced? Or also, I think it's important on listings if they're not accurately priced, getting your getting your buyers to write an offer regardless. You know what? Write it. it doesn't cost anything to write it. Write it up. See where the market what the market is. So just really like you know moving people along. They want to be handheld, but they need yeah. people are scared and they need to be moved along. Love that. I think one of the biggest takeaways is know the market and yeah. practice what you're going to say. I, I like that. Those are two solid takeaways. That's kind of what I was looking for. Marty. I just say be prepared. You know, one of um, we showed a new construction recently, and um, and I've I've uh, got a supply of masks and gloves and, and booties for all my agents. And and I think one of the most we knew this person was really interested in this house, so we asked him many people. So it's, it's a couple and three children. So we brought mask and, and everything for the whole family. So I, I think being prepared uh, because you're going to have some people that, that do business a different way. Uh, I think telling them to leave their purse in the car, you know, just take the keys uh, to your, in, in providing them with a plastic bag, maybe to put their a little, not, not a plastic bag, but a Ziploc to put their phone in and just be prepared for what we're going to deal with here and protect yourself and protect your client. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Karina. Yeah. Um, you know, I think your first action item is getting your head straight, right? And making sure that your mindset is in a place of total commitment to your business, to your clients, to your goals. Um, our, like even brain research and science shows that you can't experience fear um, if you're thinking about commitment, right? Your brain can't go two directions. And so if you've made like a full on commitment to your business and to all the things that these ladies are talking about in your action steps of being prepared and safety and, um, you know, improving on your, your scripting and your skills by all means, but nothing beats getting on the phone and having those conversations and finding the people who really do need your help. Right. If you're really prepared and you've put these steps in place um, to really work your business and take care of your clients in that way. Um, and then, you know, you just now it's a matter of finding the people who really do need your service and being really ready and knowledgeable um, to, to jump into action for them. I think also as an industry, this is really going to um, show up in how we need to be more knowledgeable and more skilled in our business. Um, I think for so many years, we've, we have tended to be very transactional. Um, and certainly over the last couple of years, a lot about the transactional part of our business is changing um, or even not even being necessary. You know, all of the, the checklist um, where, you know, there's definitely a lot of resources now to take care of that for us. So, you know, where I think we're even seeing clients now expecting and really needing us is to be really knowledgeable about the product, be able to ask the right questions on their behalf or think about things before they even know that it's something that they needed to think about. So um, I, first, I, get your head straight and then I go. I love that. Get your head straight. I think that's, uh, that is a great point for everybody. And, I and think, the I think skills, I think Tristan, sorry to interrupt, Tristan and I, we've heard over and over that we have to have a better skill set than we may have ever had as we get out of this. Right. Yeah, and I think that's taken for granted here specifically. And this is why we, we talked about it way later because everybody here has this very strong mindset. Of course. Yeah, yeah, of course we have a little ups and down here, but here and there, but it's something that's kind of like an afterthought. We've already been working on this for so many years. So uh, Karina, I'm glad you brought it up. Everybody here already works at an extremely high level, which is awesome to see. So just wanted to, to mention that. Um, I, I think that's so important to the viewers. So thank you. Yes. Lauren, some I mean, action items. For New York City, I think the one word right now that every seller is saying to me is pre-screening. They want to know who's coming in. Have they looked at the video? And this is again, we're preempting. Mm -hmm. but have they seen the video completely? 
Do they know everything about it? Have they been looking for a while? Does their broker know what she's doing? Like they 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 want a little bio on the person. You know, they're really wanting us to pre-screen like we've never had to do before. And actually, it's probably going to make our job a little bit easier, and it'll weed out the people who really shouldn't be coming. I mean, I'm dealing with co-ops with board interviews, and I'm dealing with, you know, all sorts of different kind of properties. We want to make sure they can afford it. We want to make sure they can pass the building. You know, there's a lot of things. So everyone is really saying who is interested, who are they, and please pre-screen. It's so interesting to me. I feel like the industry may come out better in the end. I think some of, this, some, some of this stuff may never go away. Um, and so I like that. Tristan. I certainly hope that one comes into play everywhere. Pre -screen. Can you guys imagine right. pre-screening everywhere? That'd be, that'd be right. insanely awesome. <laughs> uh, I, I love that. Um, did we get through everybody on that question, Eric? Is we did. One? Okay, perfect. Did. I have one then. Final question, unless we have other ones here and there. Uh, we've got about 10 minutes left. So here we go. I'll go back to Tammy first. Tammy, when you first started in the business, uh, well, about a year ago, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, no, when you first started in the business, uh, it, there was a lot of ups and downs, just like for everybody here. What, what would you suggest for somebody new? Because we have a lot of newer agents now, and they're like, oh, my gosh, what do I do now? I jumped in at the wrong time. Are there any steps that you could think of if you were starting all over, yeah. here's what you do. Anything? Yeah. I mean, and I do, I do this all the time and I did this when I started. It's like, put out what you want, like say what you want and write it out. I feel like, actually, I feel like this is a good pause and reset for all of us because I feel like real estate, you're in a washing machine, you know, and now it's like a waterfall. So what do you want? Like, I was like, I want to have 20 million personally because I have 60 people here, but in escrow every month. I want it like my goal this week, I wanna sell $10 million worth of real estate. What exactly do you want, want? When you pick up a lead, how are you gonna get them? Like how many people are you gonna turn? So I, I'm really manifesting right now and I always write down like, this is how I wanna be. This is how many hours a week I wanna work. This is what I wanna do and this is how I'm gonna do it. And then it's always worked for me and it's actually always happened for me. So I think that people right now, you know, we were given this time to pause and reset and really, really, really design our life and design what we want. So I think that that's what people should be doing now. Wow. That's, I love that. that's, that's, that's yeah. awesome. So scientifically guys, just so you're paying attention, this is real. Mm -hmm. uh, we have approximately up to 70,000 thoughts in a day. And the way that our body decides, our mind decides which ones to focus on is through our filter, which is called the reticular activating system. That's the one that decides, okay, got it. We know what we're going to focus on. And the fact that she's asking herself questions that are projecting her future, that's what makes the RAS, the reticular activating system, focus. It says, got it. I know what I want. I know what I want. And it keeps on seeing that and projecting it. That's the scientific version of what you do. Yeah, I actually write it out as a story. My story, like as I'm 100 years old, and I'll write out what I want. <laughs> and That's then I'm it's awesome. goddess. My 100 year old like goddess that. says that this is what your life looked like and it works like in, every, that, in every aspect of your life, not just real estate. It's good. Tammy, is that your next talking with Tammy? Because that's a good one. I actually teach I like a it in a class. I teach a class on it. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Going to, I'll go to Karina this time. Karina, same question with you. If you were a newer agent, what would you do and how would you approach this? Um, actually, I love this question because part of where my passion for lead gen comes from and getting your mindset straight is I was to get into real estate and I had to wait to take my real estate exam because Hurricane Ike had hit Houston. Um, like we keep having these hurricanes to pop up. But I, you know, at that point, and I have, I had no idea what was happening around me. Ignorance really can be bliss. Um, and I am proof of that because I was in an office with a lot of very seasoned agents who were used to having business really kind of fall out of the sky to them. They had a lot of referral business. They had, um, you know, the phone just kind of ringing and showing up for them. And then all of a sudden when 2007 hit everything that they had had for the last four or five years and, and gotten really accustomed to just kind of dried up and went away. And so as a brand new agent, my team leader at the time just kept saying, Hey, every day that you don't make calls, is a day that you don't get paid. You might think that it's the day that you go to the closing table. And you know, she kind of trapped me. She's like, when do you get paid? I was like, at the closing. She's like, er, wrong. You know, 
Uh, um, and I, I, like, again, I didn't know what I didn't know, but she said, really, truly, the day that you don't pick up a phone and make calls, that's the day that you're not getting a paycheck. And that just really has stuck with me. And my first year as an individual agent, no team, no nothing, I closed 21 um, deals by myself in a, in a quote unquote recession um, and sold three houses to people that I had never seen the house and never saw, never saw the house, never met the client in person. Um, and, you know, the agents around me that just weren't ready to start thinking disruptively, um, they, a lot of them aren't in the business anymore. And so for any new agent right now, honestly, the gift that you have is that you are a new agent right now. And to be getting into the business when, you know, circumstances are a little different, everybody is operating a little bit more creatively, um, consumers are a little bit more graceful, like just get on the phones and make the calls and your business will boom. I didn't realize Karina that you guys just had a massive, uh, uh, kind of like an epidemic in your area where the whole tornado hit or hurricane hit a few days, a few years ago. Right. Oh, Harvey. Yeah. That's crazy. I didn't realize that we're experiencing now what you experienced then. So, um, you guys were in essence a little bit more prepared than people that hadn't gone through something like that. Yeah, you know, honestly, this is a, this to me feels a little bit more like Ike than it does Harvey. Harvey was was awful and very widespread, but also at the same time localized in in Houston. So it affected more pockets um, than it did just like Houston across the board. The way it, it affected our city across the board was everybody pitching in to help. Um, what's been really a different experience for us on this is that it was just Houston, right? In those hurricanes, and you know when like. Uh, Lauren mentioned Sandy, you know, when we've had different storms or things that it's been just a certain part of the country, what's so different about this is that it has been all of us, right? And it's affected everyone across the country where, you know, when Harvey hit, we had people like sending 18 wheelers in to help us from all over the place. Uh, you know, right now we all have to be helping our local neighbors and um, we can't pull from all the other corners of the country. So that's been a little bit different. Um, the one thing that has through all of these has been a big lesson for us is when we've all rallied together towards one common goal, especially, you know, our business and organization, um, especially when it can be to do good for others. Um, people just think very abundantly. Uh, I love what Tammy was just saying about really setting your intention. Um, and one of our coaches through all of it, and it's new season, doesn't matter how long you've been in the business, had us write down, you know, when this is all over, whatever over looks like for all of us, um, and I'm looking back, how do I want to be able to say I showed up? And to, to be able to answer that question, it makes all of your choices from now until when over whatever that looks like is really easy. Um, and so how do you want to show up? How, how do you want to be able to look back on this and say, this is how I showed up. This is how I was there for my community, for my team, for my clients, for my, my family. I love that. That's, that's beautiful. Marty, you're next, and then we'll end with Lauren here. Well, when I started in real estate 30 years ago, I had three small children. I was a single parent, so it was a different world in a lot of ways, but I clearly understood, you know, that old axiom, show up, pay attention, tell the truth, and don't get attached to the outcome. So I think one of the things I would tell a new agent is, um, make the most out of every telephone call. You know, I had a call from a renter this morning. So before the, the renter wants to rent, come to find out he has a little job insecurity. But as you talk to him, he may be a client six months from now, eight months from now. So keep track of everyone. Give everyone the full benefit of your full attention when you're talking to them. And don't make any preconceived uh, whether this one can buy, I don't think this person can buy because they're calling on this. I think that's really important. And then Lauren, I think said, you've got to come from a place of service. You know, the highest uh, compliment I've ever gotten in this business is people that call me back years later who didn't give me the business two or three years before, but enjoyed meeting me and thought that I, I would give them a good service. And then I would say, finally, just to learn how to risk at a high level, because uh, you're never going to achieve anything very high unless you learn how to risk a lot in this business. I like that. Uh, I really like that ending. Learn how to risk at a high level. I think I like that's fantastic. That. Uh, Lauren, yeah. Lauren, do you have anything to add there? If you're I'm going to take... 
I'm going to take a totally different approach because I agree with everyone saying, but I think this is a time where people can take the time to learn and listen. Like Douglas Elliman has so many web seminars, Zoom calls, training, role play, you know, like all these seminars with attorneys on the mortgage people, learn how to negotiate, learn how to do this, learn how to do that. Like all these new brokers should be listening and signing up for all these different options to learn. I mean, there's just so much that we have to offer right now and so much, every deal we do is different. I'm still learning 26 years later. You know, they have social media classes, they have role play classes, they have, you know, every little thing you can think of. And I think this is the time where you should just sign up for everything and learn and listen. I, I love that too. That guys, great wisdom there. I think that's fantastic. Those of you on this call, lucky. Good that stuff. That was good. And, and guys, oh, or, I'm sorry. In this case, ladies, I apologize. Ladies. <laughs> ladies um, if you need, if you have any products that you sell, like coaching or anywhere you want to lead people to, send that to to us, and then we'll post it out. So we send it out to all six hundred thousand people yeah. in our database. And this way, if you want more followers on something, or you like Tammy had something that she sells, the manifestation thing, that's cool. We could totally add that to there. So yep. just let us know what you want to add here, and we'll send it out. But yeah, we'll get the for all the viewers. We'll get this recording out both on Breakthrough Broker and Lab Code Agents. Uh, we'll send it out an email, and and ladies, we'll get all of your information so they can like you on Facebook, like you on your Instagram, and so get us all that stuff. That'd be fantastic. They're asking for it, so send it. Yeah, everybody here on the chat, guys. I'm putting the link to our YouTube, so just subscribe there as well. So at least you can watch the replay. Eric, anything in closing, buddy? No, this was great. Guys, I appreciate your time. I know you're busy. I know you guys are rock stars. And for you to take your time for, for all these agents, it's very helpful and it's gracious. And, and we really, Tristan and I really appreciate uh, the time you donated to helping other agents. So we, yeah, we try to diversify here too. So we've got Tammy, which is an independent broker, Lauren, which is Douglas Elliman, Marty EXP, and Karina with Keller Williams. Um, you know, just we're all working together towards the same Absolutely. goal. Thank you for being on here. Absolutely. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. We really people. appreciate it. Good night, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.